pockets. That's one thing that I learned is you gotta, it's kind of like men, you gotta, you gotta put them where you want them to go and then tell them how great they are and sing to them a little. sweet gunpowder. I'm here to love you. I'm here to serve you. I'm here to love you. I'm here to do all the things. Hi, Ritzy girl. Hello, my beautiful. Hi. It's good to see you. Poor Ritzy. She's looking old in her days right now, but it doesn't keep her out of the woods. I thought that I would show y'all how my garden is going and I'm a survivor. I haven't been able to show you in a little while because when I'm here, it's been so dang windy that I haven't been able to keep up. And it turns out that all this rain that we're getting has really provided some growth. I know, I know what you're saying. Jamie, that's, that's a pretty crowded garden. I would happen to agree with you. Uh, this right here, <laughs> this right here is um, some squash that I didn't realize. This is called winter squash. I didn't realize it was going to like trail out. For whatever reason, I thought that I planted squash that would do what zucchini does, which is form a little plant right here and sort of like go like this and that's it. Have a base, a home base. And this little squash right here, uh, lesson number 972 in gardening, uh, it needs more space than what I've given it here, but it's doing what it can, what it wants, and, and just growing all the places. So uh, that's definitely a lesson right here. Uh, these are my eggplants, and I'm so excited about them, y'all. I have only ever eaten like eggplant parmesan. That's the only thing I know what to make with eggplants, but I wanna grow them so bad because they're the prettiest little flowers and plants. There's no fruit on here yet, but they are getting pretty big. This is correct yellow squash and did what I thought it would do. Learned that, as you can see, this plant is smaller than those because I didn't learn what I did until you get the point. I also have some green beans growing in the backdrop right here. And oh, look, a little tiny pansy hiding out down there. Okay, we got a little crowded. I got a little carried away because I thought, I thought the green beans would grow and trellis a lot faster than they are. They didn't actually, and I don't think that's due to root space. I just think it's my timing was not correct. We'll just chalk it up to another gardening lesson, but they're starting to lean over, which is good. And the wind has not helped at all. They're big, healthy plants. And once they get going out here, out here, I keep waving and once they get going out here, I think that they'll be really neat and productive around that. Okay. Then I have a tomato plant here in the corner. Hello, sweet love, that I need to prune significantly and put a stake in. I had intentions of using this stake, but because of all the rain that we've had, it sort of started to sag. And I'm not, I don't wanna give up my Maggie Lantern. I think that's a really special thing that someone had sent. More green beans along this edge. And then, I have additional yellow squash that I planted. So we have three rounds of zucchini squash squash. So this was first in, second in, third in. I think they call that succession planting, but basically it gives you a longer crop because you planted them at different intervals. We're gonna see how that works out. If I can just grow one of them, I'll be pleased. So next up, these are the cucumbers that Lil Brindley planted and you can see they're finally reaching out and touching somebody, which is great news. Get them off. You're gonna love this. This was a sucker off of that. I don't know if you watch Stephanie's channel, but she talks a lot about suckers. So a sucker is one of these that I should have pruned off of here. And it's, it's basically taking nutrients from the plant to, and keeping it from growing upward. I, I did not keep up with this and it's, it went in two, two places basically, which is not the intention. But in the beginning I was really great at it and I plucked some suckers and I went ahead and replanted them so I would have additional tomato plants. The thought was that my zoo, my squash would be at the bottom, my tomatoes would go up and my cucumbers would trellis. 
I clearly have not mastered this yet because I have, I have a lot of green right now. I'm hoping though that because this is, like I said, reaching out and touching somebody, that this will go up and free up the space, which it already is starting to. I just have to, you have to train your plants. That's one thing that I learned is you gotta, it's kind of like men, you gotta, you gotta put them where you want them to go and then tell them how great they are and sing to them a little. Um, but basically tucking them in the trellis to make them grow that way, to make them know like, hey, this is where you belong, go here. And it's just been incredibly windy over the past week. So it's been very hard to get them to do that. But with time and a little bit more diligence, I think it's gonna, it's gonna happen. Like, look, this cucumber right here is laying down. There's no reason on earth that it shouldn't be already connecting right there. I know, baby, I know. You guys, Gunpowder believes that she is starved for love. I promise you. When I'm here, which is four to six hours a day, she gets all of it. All of it. She's right by my side in everything that I do. She and Hank and Ritzy. Now, uh, Trixie and Buddy tend to spend more time with Lester. So that's okay. That's okay. Everybody has their animals that choose them. But, all right. So these cucumbers, see, look, he's reached out and touched somebody. It's good news. This one, this one's trying. We're going to put this one over here. And we succession planted these two. So these were a week earlier, no, two weeks earlier than these. So these are not ready to reach up and over yet, but that's okay. Because as long as I can get these up and out of the way, then that should give me two more tomato plants to function with. And then I have my round three of squash here. Next up, yes, my love, Stephanie gave me three different kinds of tomato plants that I put in here. These are regular pickle brush, pickle bush cucumbers. Hey, you get out of here. I don't think that you're helpful. I don't think that you're supposed to be here. Okay. <laughs> but I also bought something called lemon cucumbers. That's a new adventure here for me. I'm not real sure what to expect with those, but they're here. And then the final thing, of course, we have our Peggy Martin Rose, which is one of the only surviving plants that survived this winter. These right here are loofahs. I will talk more about those later. Hey, buddy, careful. Oh, kitty. Oh, my gosh. This pot holds, I got some um, bare root strawberries in. And these are the final three that weren't really sprouting very good. So before I put them in dirt, I like to soak them in water overnight. And I guess, oh boy. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I have two more loofahs. These are the ones that Stephanie had given me. And I had already planted seeds in here. So we're just going. And eventually, hopefully if all goes well, we will have loofahs that hang down from our trellis. In addition to the roses climbing up it. We have sage, parsley oregano and then these are the purple the Cherokee purple tomatoes that Steph gave me as well so these need to be staked up I have refrained from doing so to this point because of the wind I was scared that tying them up and and keeping them out of this raised bed keeping them up and above was going to snap them over the ledge instead I have sort of let them have their own way but just overnight, I'm telling you, just overnight, they have really, they have really grown up above and beyond. And now it's to the point where I have to stake them down and put a cage around them to give them the support or they're going to snap off. No good. These are the two spaghetti squashes that Steph gave me. And they're coming along nicely. I would have thought that they would have been bigger by now, but I'm telling you, this wind has been very traumatic. Next up, we have our chives. Those are some uh, original remaining chives. And that's another type of oregano there that Wes and Angie had given us. Okay, this area right here. These are pinto beans. I've never grown pinto beans and so far no one that I know has grown pinto beans. So I have no idea what to expect. I came here today to help them reach out and touch someone and connect them to the fence. Because just overnight, we had a lot of rain and the temperature dropped. And I guess that gave, thanks Nate, that gave all of these plants the ability to boost. We have 
green pepper and yellow pepper. And then I have banana peppers and look at this. They're right here. I have a few already, already peppering right up. Those are, those are my first like produce that will come from this garden, which is exciting. Carrots, <laughs> carrots, peas that are a little too crowded. Excuse me, gunpowder, excuse me. Peas that are a little too crowded. I really thought that these would have gone on the trellis a lot sooner than they did, but they have to, hey, who's over here fighting? We got chickens and roost, oh, little alfalfa. <laughs> oh, alfalfa is being a little bit ornery over there too. Poor Darla. And Spanky's right after him. Okay, so as I was saying, the peas though, like they have to get pretty tall before they connect. And I guess that's just because of the nature of how far away this uh, cattle panel is from, from the, the actual area that they grow. I will rethink that next year on this side. We got carrots. These are mums. One thing I didn't talk about because it's probably my most proud thing here. Do y'all know what this is? Do y'all know what this is? This right here is rhubarb and it is came all the way from Illinois from my grandma's garden to right here and it grew. And I have to tell you, hold on. If there is one proud thing in gardening that I have done, it's this right here, rhubarb from my grandma. I'm stoked and I can't wait to grow enough to make a pie. I don't care if it's a four inch pie. I'm making a pie with this rhubarb this summer. Mark my words. And for everybody that says, Jamie, those leaves are poisonous. No one is going to eat the leaves. I assure you of that. I'm very conscious about what I have planted. I have researched and I know, and I know what I let in here as well. So rhubarb's on its way. Lastly, 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 let me show you what we got brewing over here. The onion bed that Wes and Angie started is crazy huge. It's even seeding, which is awesome. But this is what's left of my lemon tree. Hey, babe. And these are all melon plants in here. So we have cucumber, or excuse me. So we have cantaloupe, we have watermelon, we have musk melon, and... There's one other type of melon that I don't remember the name of it, but it's growing right here <laughs> and I'm excited. And in the center is my lemon tree. Do you know this lemon tree I've started over roughly eight times and each time it dies in the winter weather because even though I'm covering it, it can't sustain, but it comes back. So my little lemon tree is a survivor and uh, hopefully one day it'll grow big enough. To date, that has not happened, but that's okay too. All right, y'all, that's our garden update. I'm gonna tuck in these cucumbers that are getting a little out of hand over here, help them reach back out and touch someone. And uh, we're gonna keep growing. I'm gonna go check on the chickens now. Mm -hmm.